Hey guys, today I am going to be reading Lesson 25 short story, which is called Toys, Amazing Stories Behind Some Great Inventions by Don Wolfson. It is an informational text, so it gives you some information, and we're going to focus on the diagrams in this one, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. Wind-up toys and automatons. What makes a wind-up toy work? Turning a key tightens the spring inside the toy. As the spring unwinds, it turns gears, which moves the toy's parts. Today's wind-up toys are for children, and most of them are relatively simple. Originally, wind-up toys were for adults, usually royalty, and were often extremely complicated and expensive. Rather than wind-up toys, they were called automatons and usually featured people, animals, or vehicles of some kind. With the finest craftsmanship, automatons moved by means of elaborate internal clockwork devices. Their exterior was formed and decorated by hand, in many cases with the utmost skill and attention to detail. In the late 1400s, a German inventor by the name of Carol Grodd was often invited to royal banquets. Sitting at the table, Grodd would open his hands and release a metal fly that buzzed around the room, circled the long dining table, and then returned to rest on its maker's hand. A few years later, Grodd created a life-size mechanical eagle that could fly around town and then return to its original spot. So if you look at the diagram up here, turning the key on the wind up toy tightens the spring. Okay. You see all this stuff is going on in here. As the spring unwinds, it turns the gears inside the toy, causing the toy to move. So it has all of these little springs in here and gears. And as you tight, as you turn the key, the spring gets wound up and it gets going. In 1509, the famous artist and inventor Leonardo da Vinci constructed a mechanical lion to welcome Louis XII to Italy. When the French king was seated on his throne, Leonardo placed the animal on the floor at the opposite end of a great hall. A spectator stared in amazement. The clockwork lion moved slowly toward the king. It stopped in front of him, and as if in tribute to the king, tore open his chest with its claws. A decorative fleur-de-lis, the symbol of French royalty, tumbled out and fell at the king's feet. An even more incredible story is told by René Descartes, a renowned French philosopher and scientist of the 1600s. Descartes believed that all living creatures, including people, are basically just highly developed machines. To demonstrate this, he constructed a life-size mechanical girl. Shortly after completing the automaton, whom he called Franchina, he took her on a sea voyage. By accident, the captain of the ship set her in motion. Terrified by her sudden movement, the captain ran. The robotic Franchina kept coming toward him. In a panic, the captain grabbed the automaton and threw it overboard. Perhaps the most fantastic mechanical figures of all time were created by Jean-Pierre Dros, a Swiss watchmaker, and by his son, Henri Louis. One of those made by Jean-Pierre, called the writer, was a full-size likeness of a young boy seated at a desk. When put into motion, the clockwork child dipped his pen in a bottle of ink, shook off the surplus with a flick of the wrist, then proceeded to write clear and correct sentences. As each line was completed, the hand holding the pen moved to the beginning of the next line. Superior to the writer was the designer, an automaton created by Jean-Pierre's son, Henri Louis. Like an artist studying his model, the automaton paused from time to time as he sketched, examined his work, corrected errors, and even blew the eraser dust from the paper. On one occasion, the designer was seated before King Louis XVI of France. After working for some time, the automaton put down his pencil and gestured with his hand to his work, a portrait of the French king. Later, when Henry Louis gave a demonstration in England, his automaton drew portraits of the English monarch and other royalty. Henry Louis died at the height of his fame in 1790. With him, the art of making automatons declined. Though a few choice pieces were created after this time by other artists, the quality of work went steadily downhill. More and more, the toys were made by machine rather than hand, and they became generally much simpler and cheaper. By the 19th century, they were made of tin or plastic and mass-produced in large numbers. Today, wind-up cars, tractors, trains, spaceships, and robots roll off assembly lines by the thousands. Many of them are clever and fun to play with, but the era of automatons is over. Will this specialized art form return? What do you think? So, we are going to be doing the text-to-text -to -text today. We're going to be writing about technology. In the fun they had, Margie learns from a mechanical teacher five days a week. Think about a technology product you use often, any kind of technology. What if that product had never been invented? I want you to write a paragraph telling how your life would be different if this product did not exist.